Okay, I promised that I would show a little bit about how I colored the birds and all on this uh, this die, which cuts out to this piece here from Elizabeth Craft Designs. And this was the two versions that I had done of it, the little robins and the little bluebirds. So... Let me see, since I have all of my stuff out here, and I decided today that I would just do the little bluebirds again because I want to make a little different card using with the, the bluebirds on it, so... That's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to start out by, I use the, what is it, spun sugar. And do just a little light sponging of it. Almost all the way up to, there's like a little scored. Y'all, I cannot pick anything up with these hands. A little scored line there. Maybe you can see it. That separates like the wing from the body part of the bird. And I want color to just under that. And I just do the same on both little birds. I just keep adding it. And I do the color adding in very small amounts. With very little color on the little sponge. So that I can control it a little bit more as to exactly where it's going to go and how much. Okay, then I'm going to deepen just the edge of that a little bit with some of the barn door color. I don't want the the boldness of the red to be anywhere except just on that edge. And whoa, kind of like a shaded stroke that I would use if I was painting. Oh, that one actually looks a little better. Let's see, let me add a little more. Of the deeper color to this one right up under that breast area. Cool. Okay, that will work. Okay, then the blue color is going to be, I have to see if I've used a particular blue or not. Yet, and I don't think I have, so I'll get out another little applicator. I'm going to use this little stormy sky and just lay in my the top sides of the bird with it. That is a very pretty color. I like that blue. And then let it kind of fade down onto the wing area. And we'll pull up the little tails to give them some color. I like that. Okay, then I want the, where's that blue? Here it is. This salty ocean color. I'm going to use it to create the, the more intense bluebird color. Just because when the sun shines on them. Some of them will be so bright. I startled one the other day when I took my dog out. He was actually on the ground in front of us and I didn't 
see him at first. And he took offline, and that blue was just so pretty. But he just flew up to the power line above where we were at, so he was okay. Okay, so that is all I'm going to do to that. Then I want to take this mustard seed and put in their little beaks. Their little beaks almost get colored with the other colors, but I then go back and add them in there. And I didn't get quite enough of the blue right around this one's little face. There it goes. Okay, that looks a lot better. Now, I want to do the little tree limbs. I don't think I had used this iced spruce color before. I don't see. Ah, yes, I think I did. I think this is it right here. That's it. Okay. And tree limbs are not just brown. So, I like this color to kind of lay in a base for the little limb part of this die. I kept calling it a birds and branch die, and I think its actual name is called lovebirds, but it is just the sweetest eye. And it's so versatile because you can do so many different birds. The the robins and the bluebirds, of course, are the ones that just kind of naturally come to mind. But I was as I was looking, I sit next to a window that looks right out into a selection of bird feeders that I have out. And I could see out there and watch all the different birds that come to my feeders. So I'm going to do the little leg area that's under them in a little darker brown. And then where each of these little like limb nodules and underneath the, the leaves, I'm going to add just a touch of the darker brown and it actually helps give more of the illusion that it's an actual tree limb color than if you just come in here and did everything brown because trees are not really brown there's so many different shades of grays and greens and brownish effects, but I just like doing mine that way, so that's how I do them. Okay, now the leaves, I like to do them in two steps. So from the end, I pull in the lighter color, which is the shabby shutters, and I do that to each one of the leaves. I pull from the outer edge oh, to the center. And I don't worry if I don't cover the entire leaf shape up. Because that's not really going to matter because I'm going to go back and, and do a darker color anyway. So this is just to get the color on the ends that I want there. And normally, doing this, I would actually take a little more time and be a little more careful. But I was trying to do this in, a, in an allotted time video that just wouldn't be so drawn out. But I just absolutely love this die. And like I said, it's it's so versatile because even if you didn't want to do a like a white cardstock that you had to then go back and color in. This die is so pretty done just in a a dark 
cardstock a solid color and to create a shadow effect. Okay, now I'm taking a darker green. This is forest moss. And I'm going to, on the leaves, instead of pulling from the outer edge in, I'm going to pull from the base, but I'm not going to, to like pull up the whole leaf. It's almost as if the effect, if I was doing this with a paintbrush, it's kind of a touch pull just a smidgen and then lift it off so that it it almost creates a little bit of a drag and then it gives you that shaded more dimensional look almost automatically to your leaves and you haven't had to hardly do anything to them and the smaller leaves you just do shorter quicker little stroke I call it a stroke because to me that's how I would do it if I was using a, a paintbrush and paint to do these which I'm going to do I'm going to cut some of these out of watercolor paper and do my own little painting technique to them but I just think that is absolutely adorable and then what I did to create my little eyes is I actually took my little 16th inch hole punch and using just some black cardstock, if I can see this, punched out two little hole or two little circles and very carefully taking just a little dot of glue out and I used my little a little bitty pokey tool thing and I ever so carefully pick the eye up set it into place give it a little press do the same thing on the other little black dot oh come on get off there we go didn't want to slide for me Okay, and then, because I have to have the whites in those eyes, and this is the part that messes with my own eyes, because I can barely see it to do it, but we will give it a shot here, too, with just the tiniest little dot of acrylic paint. We will see. I think I had excess glue on the end of it. Well, if I was actually touching the paint, I reckon it would make a difference, wouldn't it? We'll see if we can give him the little whites of his eyes. And there he goes. And so that's the... Put it on something where maybe you can see a little better. And so that's how I created the little bluebird die from Elizabeth Craft Designs. Hope y'all liked it.